Hi, I'm John Byrne with Poets and Quants. I'm on the campus at the University of Virginia at the Darden School of Business, and I'm here with one of the most beloved teachers at Darden, Greg Fairchild. John, great to be here. It's really Glad great to have here. you. Now, Greg, you've been voted best teacher many times over. You teach strategic management, entrepreneurship, and ethics, and even have a larger role than that. But I want to talk about the teaching because Please. it's such a central part of the Darden culture. You know, survey after survey, year after year, has shown that the quality of the teaching at Darden is second to none. What's the secret? When we think about teaching at this institution, we think about what happens in the classroom. We also think about what happens outside the classroom. And that involves both our interaction that we might have with students, talking in the hallway, we have a tradition called First Coffee, working with students on individual research projects, having students into your home for dinner. I actually do that a good bit. But it also involves the way we as a faculty actually interact about teaching. There's this environment where we're encouraging each other, challenging each other, and there's even just a little bit of competition to be better at that. The professors take a deep interest in the students in the classroom and outside the classroom. Where does that come from? Well, for me, it comes from I was on the other side of that equation years ago. You were an MBA here, and then went to Procter & Gamble, and then decided you wanted to be an academic. I did not enter Darden thinking I would be sitting in front of you now talking as a professor. And I was shocked during the end of my first year when one of the faculty, who is now one of my faculty colleagues, <laughs> said, you know, the way you ask questions in the room, you might want to think about coming back and getting a PhD. The seed had been planted. Mm -hmm. And I point out right. to you that that seed is because people knew me and had a relationship with me personally. Now, ultimately, people come to business school because they want to have a more fulfilled and enriched career professionally. Sure. How does Darden prepare them for that? Here at Darden, we build a discipline in how to make decisions and how to use those tools and how to explain it to a room of people that might not agree with you. There's that moment when the person leading the meeting says, Greg, what do you think? And your ability to then quickly, succinctly, directly answer the question ends up sometimes being the mark of difference of who gets the second question and the third question. And that is the discipline we need to do to help prepare them for the next day. A lot of the strategy, like the vehicles, different, the economic logic looks different. Otherwise, unattractive industry for someone on the outside, attractive for incumbents, and then this incumbent looks Now, Greg, really you teach entrepreneurship. What resources are there here to help nurture that sort of entrepreneurial mindset? You know, the interest in entrepreneurship courses at Darden is great. There absolutely are many different ways that we facilitate these types of opportunities. You know, we have an incubator. Um, we have a set of networks that people can tie into of other entrepreneurs. We have extra educational courses that people can be a part of. And we do research on entrepreneurs. We offer scholarships to students who perform very well in the first year and uh, then can receive entrepreneurship funding that helps them. But that funding really is to allay some of the debts that they have in the academic program. Right. And now, Greg, you've, you've recently taken on a role that essentially makes you an entrepreneur. You've become Associate Dean of the Washington, D.C. initiatives. Um, talk a little bit about what you're doing in D.C. You know, Washington, D.C. is a place of ideas, John, where we talk about how policy and business come together. We see that asset as one that provides a wealth of opportunities for students that could be looking at certain careers that could be in Washington, literally in Washington, but for companies that care about the way policy and business interact, they get a real insight that we couldn't offer um, in probably many other places on the planet. By us being there, we're in the midst of that. And it's an opportunity that, again, Darden is in the discussion. You know, when I think of your career here, I think about how transformative Darden has been to your life. I mean, coming here as a student and then coming back as a professor and having done all the different things that you've done, including to go into a penitentiary, a jail, <laughs> and to literally teach prisoners about business and entrepreneurship. You know, there's a, there's a stereotype that's out there about business schools and business school and businesses that it's about money, that it has little to do with uh, worrying about other than self. Well, at Darden, we don't believe that. We teach ethics. We teach all those things. This is one example of where it is real, it is clear, 
students find themselves going two nights a week to teach people who I'm not sure are going to benefit them directly in their financial pockets, but they do so because they feel like it's benefiting them in terms of their hearts and in terms of our society. You've been a student here. You've been a professor for nearly 17 years. What's your advice to a prospective student who wants to come here, and why should they choose Darden? I'd say that um, if you're interested in a place where you knew that your professors were taking your acquisition of the knowledge they're trying to deliver in a really serious way, that it wasn't something that was a necessary evil, but was really why they were there, then this might be a good place for you. We are preparing the next generation's leaders, be they in business, be they in government, wherever they're going to be. I take that as a really serious part of the vocation and why I'm here. Greg, thank you so much. Thanks, John. This is John Byrne with Poets and Quants. Thanks for watching.